Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to um, part one of 2023. Uh, we're going to jump right in here, Taurus, and we are actually going to look at your first house in this first row. We're basically going to be looking at your approach to the year uh, and any new beginnings that could come in for you. And uh, funny enough, you have this third house card, which says communication on it. The first house you know, kind of has to do with how you present yourself to the world and how other people see you and all this other stuff. And what I would say is that, you know, communication could be one of the ways that you are presenting yourself to the world with that first house energy. So, um, you know, we're going to be looking at your third house in this row right here, and we will get more details on what this third house card could potentially mean. But I do feel that you could be you know, putting a lot out into the world. I mean, this is definitely like a really good year for you. You are what I would say is one of the, you know, bigger players of 2023 as far as astrology is concerned. So, you know, there's going to be just a lot going on for you in general. And a, a lot of this could have to do with communication. So I feel communication is going to be very important for you. The other thing that's popping into my head here for you, Taurus, is that the first house uh, has to do with um, new beginnings. And I kind of feel like there is a new beginning in the way that you communicate, not just with people, but with the world. You have the world card as your first card. You also have the sun. And I feel like I've been saying to you for a while that, you know, if you have a business if you have something that's more, you know, public facing as far as a job is concerned, then, you know, communication is going to be highlighted. And I also th feel that it's going to be very profitable for you as well, especially if you have like a career that does this. Again, you have the world, the king of pentacles and the knight of swords. It's amazing that you show up as yourself right here with the king of pentacles. I mean, literally you're showing up as yourself in the house of yourself, <laughs> the first house. So I really feel you're kind of entering into this year in a very strong position. Again, as far as I'm concerned, you are definitely one of like the major players of 2023. You know, astrologically, your astrology plays a major role in everybody's life. But, you know, just that basically uh, puts you in a very strong position. So I would take advantage of it. Um, it seems to be another year where getting attention is really important. Again, I you know, part of me, believes that this is because we have Pluto entering into Aquarius. It's going from Capricorn to Aquarius. Aquarius is like the star card. And, you know, the star card is definitely a card of attention, getting attention, inspiring other people. You know, I've talked about this quite a bit. So if you're doing any of those things, you're going to benefit from it. If you want something like love, then what I would say is that love could easily come into your life. But, you know, it's going to come through attention or getting attention. This reading is kind of saying to me that you can have whatever you want. <laughs> um, and you have the simplicity card at the end that we're going to talk about. And I think it's just saying, like, keep it simple. If you want something, just go directly for it. You have the seven of cups. I say this to you in like every single reading. And intuitively, I'm not sure if it's because like, you know, I'm not calling you out here, but you know, it's like, I don't know if you're overcomplicating like the way that you think you have to get things, but I kind of feel like you're overcomplicating the way that you think you have to get things. So I would be in, uh, um, you know, to make this less confusing, what I would say is I would look at any of the stories you tell yourself about like how to make money or about how to get love or what love means to you. I would look at those stories and I would say like, are they complicated? Do I feel like I have to do a bunch of work to get the things I would want? I want? And I'm spending time on this, Taurus, because I think it's super important for you. I literally feel you could have whatever you want, but I would keep it simple. Uh, you have the world, and again, I feel that you are a big player in the world this year in general. Again, uh, this is part one of three. This reading, I'm going to be, throughout the rest of this month of December, I'm going to be putting out all three parts, of course. We're covering all 12 houses in depth in your astrology for 2023. And uh, what I would say here is, you know, duh, again, I feel like you're just a major player in the world. I also feel if you have anything that you want to communicate to the world, this could be through art, music, YouTube videos, podcasts whatever. <laughs> uh, I would definitely be doing it if I were you, uh, Taurus, because there's probably a lot of attention. And this attention is going to be beneficial for you. You also have the Knight of Swords, another card of communication. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, I kind of feel this is saying don't run away from new beginnings. Uh, sometimes I feel like the Knight of Swords is just a little bit of fear 
And that's not like an accurate way to read the Knight of Swords, but intuitively that's how I read him sometimes because sometimes I think we can get very close to success and then something happens, we, we get like a little bit nervous that we're gonna be, you know, wrong or whatever. And then we like run the other direction, you know? So I feel like this is saying, you know, charge through those moments where maybe you're a little bit unsure of yourself. I just did a short the other day where I was talking about how no one, you know, I think the secret to life, one of the secrets to life is the fact that no one has a clue what they're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing uh, at all, period. Even the most successful people on earth, it's like they had no clue how to do what they did. They just did it. <laughs> and I get that energy for you. It might have been you that I said that to, by the way. Look at this. With the world card, you have this exaltation card. It literally is saying that you are in the most high position. You know, I feel like you are getting a lot of attention. And again, I feel like the that, you know, kind of astrologically, just as far as the astrology is in concerned in general, you are being blessed uh, this year. So t but you're going to have to take advantage of it. With the King of Pentacles, you have this uh, restlessness card. Um, I don't think this is like bad restlessness. I would just make sure you're channeling uh, your restless energy. If you're feeling restless, you know, do something. Uh, put that energy into creativity. Put that energy into a hobby or doing something. But, you know, I don't really feel this is bad restlessness. I feel it's just more anticipation. With the Knight of Swords, you have this detachment card here. So yeah, like I feel like this is running away type of energy. Again, not calling you out, but so sometimes I think we, we all do it. I've done it, right? Uh, I'm far from perfect, but sometimes I think we get a little bit unsure of our future. So then we kind of detach and just shut down. I would be, that's like the one thing that is really standing out to me as kind of like a warning in this reading is it's saying like, don't run away from things. I feel if you face things head on, you're gonna find answers, you're gonna find the solutions, but it's gonna require you to kind of like jump right in is kind of what I'm getting here. Uh, next, we're gonna look at um, your second house and it's all gonna be all about making it rain here, Taurus, and like how you can make more money. Second house has to do with like material goods, um, money, of course, your earned income, things like that. But what I would say here is you have this juggling card. It says, prepare to be busy juggling many roles or projects. Try to maintain balance between work and personal life. So, you know, definitely, I feel you are definitely going to be busy for sure. And I also feel you just have a lot going on this year. Um, I would try to like simplify things as much as possible. And, you know, it's like also like what's popping into my head is like personally, Last year, I started hiring a bunch of people to, you know, <laughs> grow the the minnow pond, right? And, um, you know, I started documenting everything that I do. And I read this book, The E-Myth, like years ago. And so if you're looking for a good book, if you have a business, read The E-Myth. It's all about documenting your process so that when you hire people, you can just be like, this is exactly what I want done. Do it this way. And, um, you know, I feel that would be very beneficial for you, especially if you're busy. I would just, like, find some time to document those things. Uh, for others, I feel like you're just freaking busy. You have a lot going on and I feel it's saying balance. You have the high priestess, the page of pentacles and the sun card here. Obviously, I feel your second house is being highlighted. Definitely could be an increase in your income this year uh, or just like much more happy times uh, as far as your finances are concerned. So I feel that there could be, um, you know, your finances could be growing just in general with this energy. The other thing about the sun is that it does represent playful energy. This is like your inner child. There's a wall behind this child on the horse and that wall represents the wall we all put up against our inner child. And it kind of says like, sometimes we need to let loose. Sometimes we need to make sure that we let our inner child out, that we go play or we go again, enjoy a hobby or do something that we wanna do just so we don't become dull, right? <laughs> so I would make sure to do that. Uh, you have the Page of Pentacles, really amazing learning year uh, this year. Just in general, I think that's true for everyone, but it's definitely true for you here, Taurus. So if you're like learning any new skills or you know, if you're wanting to learn new skills, wanting to um, you know, grow what you do, I would learn as much as you possibly can. The Page of Pentacles is a card of studiousness. It's kind of like a card of getting a feather in your cap. And guess what? Is like, if we go like this up to here, the fool has a feather in his cap right here. So, you know, to me, the Page of Pentacles going to that fool uh, could say that there's like a lot of success and a lot of opportunity for you to become more financially successful going in this direction. Here's the other thing that I want to say here, Taurus, as well, is that you have Jupiter, you know, will be entering into your sign uh, this year, and that will be like in April. So, you know, it's going to retrograde back into Aries eventually. Uh, and then, you know, in 2024, obviously, it's going to be in your sign. But, um, you know, 
really good for your finances. You also have the High Priestess here. I feel it would be an amazing year for you to kind of look into your finances. Um, the High Priestess can represent like secrets and mysteries, but uh, I kind of feel this is a good thing. Like there might be some ways that you could make more money in your career, but you're going to have to discover them. The High Priestess has no roof over her head. And, you know, it kind of represents the fact that there are no limits to what she can create, what she can do, and what she can have in her life. But the trick is, is that she has to do it. <laughs> she has to get moving. She has to trust her intuition. The other thing that I would say is that, you know, I always say that she has three levels to her crown or three stages of the moon of the, on her crown there. And it kind of represents the fact that she sees the beginning, middle, and end of every single situation that she enters into. But um, maybe not intuitively. She creates what she wants. So it kind of says to me that you should be using your, your imagination to see things exactly how you want them to go. And then they'll probably go that way, whatever that means for you. With the High Priestess, you have the birth card. Definitely birthing new, new things in your career and in your business. Um, the thing with you, Taurus, is I don't necessarily see you doing something like completely new for most of you. Of course, some of you will, of course. But, um, you know, for the most part, like if you have a business, I feel like you're doing the same thing, but uh, you could just be doing new things within that business. It, to me, um, you're very similar to Aries in the sense that uh, they also, like everybody else, all the other signs get these messages of completely doing something completely different. <laughs> uh, but you... Uh, I feel like this is not necessarily something different. I feel like some of you are just kind of expanding what you do currently. With the um, Page of Pentacles, you have these, this organization card. Every single person has had this card, which is very interesting. So I feel like staying organized this year, obviously, is going to be important with your finances. Not just paying attention to them. Like, again, I keep telling people, like, don't be paranoid about your finances right now, even though, like, the news is trying to make us paranoid about money. Um, but I would also, like, I wouldn't be paranoid, but I would pay attention. You know, there's, like, a difference between those two things. And I would also stay organized. Um, with the sun... You have this criticism card again. I would be careful of like criticizing yourself. And again, it's funny that you have the Knight of Swords. We were talking about running away from something. Like if you obviously, if you're like working in social media, people are going to criticize you. <laughs> uh, if you're work, if you're getting attention, in some way, people are going to criticize you. But you need to look at it as a good thing, not a bad thing. It's like you know, I would be worried if I didn't have people, you know, leaving me mean comments and things like that, because it means you're not making enough of a difference, right? So, um, you know, I would just ignore the criticism. Uh, next in your third house for communication, you have this no place like home card. Um, the other thing is, is that the third house can have to do with travel as well, kind of. And so it wouldn't surprise me if some of you are maybe moving. The third house also has to do with like siblings, neighbors, and you know, some of you could definitely be like moving. I would say that you're like moving for more of a reason though. Um, you know, I kind of get like round and round feelings here on this card. So, you know, just intuitively, some of you could be like living somewhere where maybe just things haven't changed and maybe you need a change of scenery, right? So if you're moving, I feel like this could be a good thing for you here. Um, and the other, and you also have the Eight of Wands in this row. So, you know, definitely another card of moving. But I do feel, again, that communication is clearly going to be very important for you. You have the Fool, which also, uh, I mean, could be taking a leap of faith moving. <laughs> you have the Queen of Cups and the Eight of Wands. Uh, if you are looking for love, by the way, I also feel there could be communication coming in love. Again, part two, we're going to be covering like most of the love houses, like the romance houses and things like that. And of course, other things as well. But, um, you know, what I would say here is there could be communication in love coming in for you. It could be a water sign or a fire sign. Water and fire really stand out to me. You do have earth here as well. So it could be, you know, basically any sign. But um, I do feel there could be communication there. I also feel that this eight of wands is just saying that your communication is going to be very, very important this year, we talked about that at the beginning of the year. The other thing I would say is going this way right here. You have the world, the Page of Pentacles, and the Eight of Wands. Uh, this really says to me that your words will create worlds, and I would be careful of your words at this time. I would also make sure that you're communicating with yourself with this Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups, she really listens to her emotions, and she really pays attention to how she feels. So you could be communicating with yourself, your body, and all those other things. And I feel for whatever reason, this is saying, listen to yourself about pretty much everything. Uh, you also have the fool here. And the fool, I feel, is you being 
like needing to take some sort of leap of faith. I feel like it is saying like, take a risk. This could be the risk of communication or uh, communicating with the world in some way. Your reading is very big picture as always. I feel like all your readings are always big picture. Um, but I feel like one thing that this is saying is that you're ready to share your voice. I feel like you're ready to share um, something <laughs> with the world and I would do it, uh, whatever it is that you're doing here. So let's see. Uh, with that fool card, you have this devotion card. Again, if there's love coming in, uh, there could be someone who will be very devoted to you. Uh, the other thing that I would say here is if you're not looking for love and with that Queen of Cups, the devotion card and the Queen of Cups could just be you loving something like your business or um, loving something that you want to create in the world and putting your time, effort, and attention into it. So I feel as long as you are devoted uh, that you will be very successful. With the Queen of Cups, you have this principal card. Again, very interesting that everyone has had this card as well. Pretty much everyone. Uh, we have Neptune and Pisces. And again, there's a million cards in this deck. So, <laughs> you know, it's crazy to me when cards repeat from sign to sign with this deck. Um, but what I would say is Neptune and Pisces, it really has to do with like traditional beliefs and also our principles. So I, I kind of feel like that goes with this Queen of Cups. There might be moments where, um, you know, maybe people are trying to get you to do something in life, whatever it is, doesn't matter. And I feel if it goes against your principles that you shouldn't do it. Or your principle, it doesn't have to be like, maybe people don't want you to do anything bad, but maybe they just want you to do something that goes against your heart. You just don't want to do it. Your heart isn't in it. And I feel like this is saying, stick up for the principle that is your heart, like how you feel about things. With the Eight of Wands, you have the control card. Love it. Now, this is basically like the world. You can see that it looks very similar to the world card. Not exactly similar, but very similar. Uh, there's also an Ouroboros here. The Ouroboros, like in the tarot, represents reinvention. And again, I do feel like some of you are changing the way that you speak. Um, I always get this message for you, Taurus, because I feel this need to like act. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, you know, I just mean that like, I think sometimes people think like acting, you're being fake, right? But like if you have a YouTube channel or, you know, a business or something that you're doing, I feel like there are like ways that, you know, you could communicate better. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, I literally feel like you need to act. Maybe some of you need to like join an improv class or something like that. Cause I feel like, I feel like you just need to shake it out, right? Maybe you're like worried too much about what people will think of you or something like that. It keeps popping into my head. It did earlier with the criticism card. And that could be the thing that's like preventing you from sharing your true voice. So I feel like you need to kind of like shake it out here. Um, for, for others, this could be in world, uh, with the world as well. This could be in love. And again, you could be communicating with someone long distance, but there's some sort of other blockage here on top of distance that I'm feeling. Like maybe you have your eye on a person. It's kind of weird because it's popping into my head that you went to school with this person. <laughs> that might be for some of you or like one of you out there, but you might've gone to school with a person. Maybe you're afraid to reach out. I would just reach out. I would shoot your shot here is what I would say, especially if it's like a fire sign, a earth sign or a water sign. Uh, at the end here for your fourth house with home and family, you have the this card here, the simplicity card. The fourth house can also have to do with like your foundations, uh, the foundation that you're working on, the foundation in your life. And uh, I kind of feel that's what this is talking about, that you're building like a new life. I feel like your life is changing significantly, but seven of cups, I feel like you need to just go straight for the, the, the straight facts and go straight for what you want. Remember what I said at the beginning of the reading that, I feel like you shouldn't be adding anything extra onto like what you create. And I know I always say this to you, but like literally Taurus is like, you know, number one, don't shoot the messenger. People are always like, you keep repeating yourself. I'm like, well, you need to listen. Number one. <laughs> number two, it's like, I can't help what the cards are saying. They say what they say. And you have the seven of cups every single reading. And I always feel like you're adding extra steps onto things. Like if you want love, you could be thinking, oh, I'll have love when and you could be adding a bunch of things into onto that list. I'll have my business when, and you could be adding a bunch of things. I feel like this is saying, no, get rid of the when, get rid of the what, the who, the why, all that, right? And just go straight for what you want. Don't add these like extra steps. Keep it simple. That's going to lead to success. You also have the King of Wands, the Seven of Cups, and the Six of Swords. Uh, the King of Wands, to me, is the true builder in the tarot. He builds things. He's like the entrepreneur, but you know, he also builds things, but whatever he wants to build, families, relationships, businesses, careers, you know, all that. And he's willing to start from scratch. <laughs> he's also very courageous and bold. And I feel that your foundation this year could have to do with that. But we're not talking about just in the home. We're talking about your foundation for the year. I feel like this should be it right here. Bold, 
courageous, charging towards things that you want. I also do feel that you could be attracting a person like this. And uh, you could be moving because this person is popping to my head again. Home and family, fourth house. But what I would also say here is I feel like some of you could be like moving or traveling because of this person. And uh, again, I feel like they're very, very solid. That's like probably the thing that will stand out to you. I even feel some of you in love have had a series of people who are very unstable. <laughs> maybe not like necessarily mentally, but maybe they just don't have jobs or maybe they can't keep a job or whatever. I feel like this person is rock solid and that's probably the thing that will stand out to you if it's a person. But for the most part, more important than just some bozo, like I feel like you need to embrace the energy of the King of Wands, bold, courageous, just going straight for what you want. You can see on these seven of cups that there are some good things and some bad things in these cups, but he just needs to grab onto one cup and he just needs to bring it down to earth. So keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate things. And I feel that will lead to the most success, obviously. You also have the six of swords as well. If you've been having any problems in the home, uh, like with family or any uh, other issues, I feel like obviously some of you uh, will be improving those issues. Again, some of you could be moving this year. And, um, you know, I feel like a move would be tr like very transformative for you, mostly because of that control card um, that we see right here. So this control card is talking about like some sort of change or reinvention. But uh, let's see. Uh, with the King of Wands, you have this risk card. Don't be afraid of taking risks. This is Sun in Aries, by the way. And or this is uh, Saturn in Aries. Sorry, I was thinking of the wrong card. Um, there's an assertion card that is the Sun in Aries. But um, I feel like there are risks that you should take and don't be afraid to like put yourself out there, take risks. Uh, this also reminds me of the Three of Pentacles, this little tree right here. So I feel like, you know, if there are things where maybe you're not feeling brave, I would, um, maybe there's a person who can make you feel brave or that you could work with on projects or businesses or whatever. And maybe the, their bravery will kind of help you be brave. With the Seven of Cups, you have this health card. Um, yeah, I would definitely, I, I feel like it's a good year to watch your health. We're coming off of a Mars retrograde, you know, at the beginning of the year, but we'll still be in the shadow to like March. And, you know, I just wouldn't go crazy. Just, you know, make sure you're staying healthy and, you know, doing things to pay attention to your health. <laughs> uh, with the Six of Swords, you have this indecision card. I actually feel like you're overcoming indecision with that six of swords. I feel that you are kind of being guided. You see, this looks like an angel right here. And so I feel like you are being divinely guided across choppy waters, but the choppy waters are probably like the past 10 years of your life, at least. <laughs> so I feel like you're moving away from these challenges and difficulties. But uh, Taurus, we're going to pull three cards now. And uh, we're going to do one, two, and three. Uh, feel free to pause this reading if you need time to think your question. I'm going to answer one question. If you don't have a question, that's fine too. I'm going to put all three together just like a personalist reading. But feel free to pause because I'm going to read the cards right now. Damn, <laughs> is all I have to say. Uh, you have the chariot, the ten of pentacles, and the queen of wands. Again, divine counterparts now with the king and queen of wands. Definitely could be a divine counterpart coming from a distance. This will be extremely abundant with that ten of pentacles. Um, so if you're finding love, this could be something that is very abundant and uh, just very successful for you. So I really like to see this. Uh, I also feel that a definite yes, if you asked a yes, no question, uh, if you're asking about should you take some sort of risk on money or something I'm hearing, I would say yes with this. Obviously, do not take this as financial advice. And obviously, if you're taking any, you know, I would be very careful of taking any risk, even though this is saying yes, just so you know, like I keep telling people I'd be very careful of your finances right now. And if you're like asking about an investment or something, definitely, again, I'm not a financial advisor. I failed math my whole entire life. So do not take advice from me, as I always say. But what I would say is based off the astrology, I would not be investing more than you can afford to lose because, you know, people keep asking me about dog coins and like all these things. And I'm always like, listen, it's like, I love cryptocurrency, trust me. But at the same time, I feel like it's a huge freaking risk, especially right now, Uranus and Taurus. <laughs> I talk about this all the time. So if you're asking about an investment, do not risk more than you can lose. You should not be like remortgaging your house to buy Bitcoin, terrible idea. So that's what I'd say here. But at the same time, this is kind of like saying yes. But again, safely. Uh, the other thing that I would say here is, again, another thing about education. Ten of Pentacles to me can represent hidden or secret information. So you have a lot about education in your reading, and I think it's a great year to learn about whatever you want. It'll lead to a victory. Uh, if you're asking for a move, about a move, yes, as well with the chariot. But this looks good. So uh, thank you for being here, Taurus. Again, we'll be coming out with two part two and three uh, in just a week or so. So uh, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you, and definitely enjoy your week.